What is up guys? So I have a good bit of content for you today. Um, what we're going to get into first is a little bit of stuff that you're going to look at it and go, what are you doing? Um, but I actually think by explaining stuff this way, it's going to be much easier for you to get an overall grasp of what's actually going on. Because you know here at Triage, we always firmly believe that if you can't explain something in a very easy to understand manner, we don't know what's going on then. You know, we if we can't explain it easily, then we are doing you a disservice because we clearly shouldn't be talking about it because we don't understand it. So if you ever watch any of those Khan Academy videos, uh, I think they're really good. I really like the way that they put their messages across and the way that they show you the information they're trying to give you. So we're actually going to start the video off by going into something that a lot of you kind of question and um, a lot of you have heard information on and you've a lot of you have been exposed to stuff that people don't really explain and what I'm talking about is why you should eat your goddamn vegetables okay because everyone knows it but they uh, something's going on you know so we're going to get into one of the many reasons you should eat your vegetables and we're going to discuss magnesium we're going to discuss magnesium's role in energy because this is actually something that you hear a lot about people kind of go oh yeah magnesium is involved in 300 enzymatic processes uh, something's going on there in the body oh i don't know you know so people don't really explain what's going on so by watching this video you're going to understand what's going on you're going to be ahead of the curve and you're going to understand why it is so important to eat your vegetables okay well, we're not just going to get into that we're also going to get into what i am doing currently kind of training wise we're going to go talk it through a little bit of my chest workout well chest push workout um, and then i'm going to talk about a few other things but without further ado let us get into the video okay now so what we have here is for those of you that are keen organic chemists or have done biology or some type of chemistry in a biological sense before, you will see that this is the ATP molecule, okay? And again, the ATP molecule is responsible or what we generally talk about when we're talking about energy. This is what the body uses to kind of store energy and transport energy around the body. Okay, so this is essentially the energy currency of the body. And it's actually, although we always talk about it as ATP and you think it's just, that's just ATP in the body, that's not generally how the body works. And in the body, ATP is bound to magnesium. And there's a very important reason it is bound to magnesium. And that is because it makes this phosphate over here more susceptible to what's called nucleophilic attack, okay? And that's important because when you want to produce energy, you actually want to get rid of one of these high energy phosphates, okay? So you want to donate it, throw it away somewhere, let it do its job, and that's called phosphorylation, okay? So when people say, oh, it's involved in enzymatic processes, this is the enzymatic process they're talking about. They're talking about this phosphorylation reaction. So what is happening, let me click down here, get you on some of this. So what's happening is we're bringing in some sort of charge over here. This is getting nucleophilically attacked. That's not even a word, but it's getting attacked at the nucleus here and then that's bringing this over here and what this is doing is kind of breaking this bond and the reason it's doing it is because this charge here this uh, a negative charge here is being drawn up towards the magnesium this one again here making this easier to break apart and donate away, okay? Now I'm gonna just scrub out a few things and you'll see what happens here with this now. So when we get this donation, we essentially are getting rid 
of this high energy phosphate. And that could go across to any kind of thing that needs it. But again, we're also getting rid of this. And we are then, let me click over here again. We are then getting another minus on this. And this magnesium now is interacting with this negative oxygen over here. Now you might think, okay, so magnesium is involved in this kind of ATP, this phosphorylation stuff. Oh, who cares? What does that have to do with relating to vegetables? And that is when we come over here to this very important molecule here. And this is very interesting because this is if you ever have heard of, you know, hemoglobin or you know that iron is important for humans to bring oxygen around the body. Well, that iron in our bodies is kind of how magnesium works in a plant or vegetable body. So it's bound in this kind of big protein kind of structure over here. And essentially what happens is when we eat vegetables, we are getting this magnesium. And again, magnesium is important for this whole phosphorylation reaction. So you need to be eating your vegetables because that is the main source of magnesium in the human diet, unless you're actually supplementing with it. So there you have it, guys. Whenever someone says, oh, you should be eating your vegetables, it is vitally important for you to actually have energy. And this is why you see a lot of people go on a vegetarian diet after having eaten so low vegetables for quite some time, or people eating a healthy diet, and they start noticing they actually have more energy. And that's because this whole reaction over here is working so much more efficiently. Now, there are obviously some other things that are going on at a mitochondrial level with that as well, B vitamin metabolism and everything. But for now, all you need to know guys is magnesium is crucially important for this whole energy production thing to actually occur. Now, so as you can quite clearly see there, eating your vegetables is very important, okay? So you shouldn't skimp out on the vegetables. And we're, when we're saying, you know, you wanna be getting in that 10 to 12 servings, even higher per day, we do genuinely mean it. And it goes far beyond just magnesium. You know, there are a huge amount of bioactive components or compounds found within vegetables that do have a huge impact on human health. So get your vegetables in. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is how I'm kind of structuring my workout. And I'm not gonna get into how much volume, how much intensity and kind of stuff that I'm uh, training with, if I could speak even. Um, but what I do want to discuss is how I'm kind of keeping track of my progress. Because as you know, both myself and Gary are kind of transitioning or have just transitioned into more of a lean gaining phase. And I hate saying a, a lean gaining phase because that's what everyone wants to do despite eating 1,000, 2,000 calories over their caloric maintenance. But essentially what we're doing is we are eating at a calorie appropriate diet, just slightly above our kind of maintenance level calories, accounting for any excessive expenditure that we are doing. Now, I've done this a few times. I don't know, I think this might be Gary's first time that he's ever tried to stay lean and gain muscle, but I've done it a few times. And I always find for myself, you know, your training performance can be a little bit variable. Okay, because some days you're going to be more recovered than others um, and without an excess of calories, like a true excess to kind of save the day, you're going to find yourself, you know, not progressing as fast as you would like to see or potentially you would hope to see, you know. So what I like to do is give myself a little bit of a rep range rather than a specific rep target. And what I like to do then is, you know, try to hit not quite failure within that rep range, but I want to either progress to the top end of the volume for that, or I want to increase the weight for that same volume, or maybe a little bit lower volume and then increase the volume again. And what I mean by that is, 
for the majority of my kind of assistance exercises, we're going to be playing around in this block anyway, in the six to eight rep range. And what I'll do is I'll choose a weight that is kind of challenging for eight reps. And then I'm going to, most of my sets or most of them, yeah, most of my sets are kind of three sets. So what we'll do is three of those, we'll go for the first one, a good challenging set of eight. You know, the next one we might find I eight is a bit of a struggle. My rate of perceived perfection or rating of perceived perfection you know isn't quite the 10 that I would like to see and maybe it's a 9 it's not 100% my technique is good and I'm getting on my reps but they're not quite perfect you know and then in the next set I might just you know drop down a rep or two or I might kind of reach failure or close to failure then quicker than I would like to have seen you know so it might go Again, I'm in the six to eight rep range. I might get eight, eight, seven, or another workout. Actually, we'll go with that. Or with that one. So we'll go eight, eight, seven. Then the next workout I do, trying to get that same exercise. I'm going to try get eight, 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 and then I'm going to try either tidy it up, get that rating of perceived perfection up to a ten. And if I can't get it up to a 10, that's going to be my main focus. But if it's a 10, I'm going, yeah, that's perfect. The next workout in, I'm going to increase the weight. Then I might go again. It might go seven, seven, seven. I might just, the jump in the dumbbells or whatever might be too large of a one to truly get that eight rep that I'm going to go for. I might even get six, six, six. And then I will try, you know, slowly increase the volume until I'm getting all sets across for eight. So that's the kind of progression method I'm using now. And I find that's really valuable for me, at least when I'm in this kind of gaining phase, but I don't have the benefit of having a true excess of calories you know now i obviously train early in the morning these days i'm kind of training about 5 30 a.m 6 a.m and i find it's actually a lot easier although you might think oh, you're not going to get warm and i was having a conversation with one of the guys the other day and he finds you know training legs in the morning is really hard for him but it's the only time he has to train and the way i kind of get past this is by getting myself really warm as soon as i get up so i'm throwing on three four layers of clothes it's not that cold out yet but i do find myself you know not quite that spring in my step anyway unless i get myself warm you know coffee helps as well but again like if i'm in a bit of a rush in the morning i have to pack more stuff away or whatever it is you know having drinking a coffee might not be or drinking a full coffee might not be exactly what i'm able to do but getting warm really helps as does that kind of progression method that I'm talking about. Having a rep range target, most rep ranges you're going to be talking about when you're looking at muscle building is kind of 6 to 8 or 10 to 12. And they're the two that I have chosen as well. But you could just as easily go 9 to 11 or 7 to 9. There's no real magic in the actual numbers. They're just generally the ones that I grew up doing so they're the ones that I kind of always revert back to. Like I find for myself, you know, there's certain aspects of the kind of 10 to 12 rep range that I really enjoy. And then there's certain aspects of the kind of six to eight rep range that I really enjoy. And I find for me at least, you know, periodizing my training. So every three to four weeks, I'm going to swap in between those two um, sides of those rep ranges really helps me stay interested in training for one, but also actually make long-term progress. And this is one of those things that people kind of forget to do is actually change their program every so often. And I'm not saying you have to go in every single workout, do a different workout, or every single month you have to change your workout, but you want to be kind of changing things that aren't working, or you want to be ensuring that you are progressing in some way. Like I always find, you know, say I go from a 12 rep or 12 rep block to an eight rep block. The first workout or two, you know, it's a little bit harder. I'm not used to that kind of higher intensity. The weights feel heavy, but I kind of get into it then. And then by the end of that eight week or eight rep block, when I go back to the 12 reps, I'm much stronger, yes, and I can kind of lift heavier weights for that 12 reps, but I find my endurance even with those 12 reps is a lot lower than I would like to see it again I'm gonna build that up again and then you know swap to the eights so it kind of goes on like that and that really does play into the whole fact that the adaptations you are getting to training 
are specific and people kind of forget this and just think they can be a mutant in all fields you know that's what crossfit kind of tries to do but it's just not how the human body works like you cannot well maybe some people can but the general majority of people aren't going to bench press 300 kilos and then run a marathon in a record time straight after it you're not going to be able to ride two horses with one ass you know so you want to pick your goals define your goals like we discussed before and then actually design a plan of action that will help you achieve those specific goals but it does have to be specific another thing so many people forget about is actually logging your workouts if you were just going to the gym picking up a random weight going yeah i kind of i'm getting a good connection with that today or that feels good you're shooting yourself in the foot like what you slept less an hour less this this week so it's feeling a little bit heavier so you go down the weight then you know you have to like you have to be kind of keeping something consistent so you can actually track what progress you're making like if you just use sometimes it can be valuable but like say a rating of perceived effort you know it's, it's going to be variable day to day and although that does have very good benefits if you are not actually progressing and you're just going yeah i'm actually getting a good connection and you've been using the same weight the whole time for the last 16 12 16 18 weeks something needs to change like you want to be making progress and it's not all just about oh feeling the squeeze and the pump like you actually want to be getting stronger or conversely you want to be actually being able to handle more volume of training you know so you do want to be tracking your workouts and i i like it old school i use a log book like i like to write it down kind of in my rest periods kind of like how did that feel kind of make some notes or anything you know maybe an angle felt better like you'll see during the workout in a second like there's certain things that i do certain ways because it suits my body or it suits me to do it that way because the angle of the chair or something you know it might not be perfect for my body but i might find like say you're going to see me do dumbbell bench press in a second and this is really you think oh i'm getting too big or something like that but i always find like my rear delts i am literally the shape of the bench in fly fit there i am literally just my rear delts are just inside the edge of that so every time i'm in that bottom position i can't get back as far as i'd like because my rear delts actually contract into that position and they kind of hit off the bench and stop the contraction. So I have to stop a little bit shorter than I would ideally like. So stuff like that, this is always gonna happen. You know, machines aren't gonna fit your body. You're gonna have to modify the machine, modify your body to fit into the exercise structure you're doing. And this is again, what we talk about all the time. Well, I've been rambling on. I'm gonna go into the workout now and do a little bit of a voiceover but enjoy that and we'll catch you at the end. All right, so first up on the menu today was some dips. And this is kind of my A1 exercise that again, I said before, I was trying to really progress on. This is, I think my second set here. Yeah, this is my third set as well. So it's only 30 kilos and I'm weighing roughly kind of 87.5 kilos in the morning. So it's not a, a huge amount of weight, but I'm still getting used to the movement but it's feeling good i really do feel the chest working a huge amount in this and they're not as smooth as i would like this is the first time i went up 30 so again still progressing it there now as you, i said earlier on you can see here that my shoulders the rear delts are kind of just outside the bench and they kind of do pinch it at the very bottom position and you saw as well that first rep that first rep is always a killer because i don't actually have that active range so ideally i would like to have a spotter but unfortunately my spotter was recording the exercise so you do what you do and um, this is one flat bench always gets me a huge amount because I actually have to drop a huge amount to actually get down onto the bench and it really does kill the amount of weight I can use. And here is my brother Dami doing the bench and he actually has some pretty slick form on the bench. And he was saying as well today that he notices about an inch off his chest. That is roughly the active range for him where it's pure all out muscular tension. But he hates doing it because it's harder because that is what muscle building is all about. Actually making 
the exercise harder. As you saw there as well, again, that first rep is a bit of a killer don't really have that active range. You can really see the upper chest working here, even though my sternum angle does change quite a little bit on this exercise, it always does, but I find this is really effective for me for building that upper chest. Then we move on to uh, Dami doing the same exercise, and again, same angle, different bodies, totally different effect. You know, as you can see, his his body doesn't move as much as mine does, um, and it really does, again, effectively work his upper chest. So, again, you want to be looking at these things from uh, the perspective of, yes, exercises target certain muscles, but how does it actually affect you? And this is one of the ones that, again, the seat position just doesn't suit my body. That also is not my sternum coming out at the end. That is the heart rate monitor I am wearing. Um, but yeah, these shoulder presses, again, staying within that active range. I'm really on all these pressing exercises, thinking elbows out and elbows in. Not a huge heavy weight, but it's an effective weight for me. So that is it guys, um, if you enjoyed the video, you know the usual, hit the like button, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And if you liked the kind of intro bit where we were discussing the kind of chemistry stuff, if you like that style of video, maybe not even just the topics we were talking about, if you liked it, do leave a comment below. And if you would like something specifically covered that I can kind of, you know, describe in depth a little bit more like that, please do not hesitate to comment below and much love guys we will see you in the next video